Well, hey guys, Jonathan Doyle with you once again. Welcome as always to the daily video message here on YouTube or Rumble. So glad you stopped by. Please, my friend, make sure you have hit the subscribe button here. And you know what I want you to do next? You ready? You're listening, you're paying attention? Good. I want you to go and check out all these links. You can book me to speak and get a free copy of my book. Uh, go and check out the link to Karen's Masterclass. My amazing wife is doing a masterclass for women all over the world. If you happen to be female and you are interested in growth and just spending time with other amazing women, uh, go and check out that masterclass. And uh, there's coaching stuff here. Those links are really important. But for now, let's jump in. These videos are short because why? Underneath the video here, you'll find a link to the podcast version, right? I do a long form podcast on this topic each day. So... This video is for those of you who just love the visual and the shorter version, but uh, you want to go deeper, go listen to the podcast version. Today, I'm talking about resilience. Why? Because tomorrow, my friends, I'm speaking at a live event. I'm going to be talking about resilience, and uh, I want to riff on a few things. It's one of those words that we have heard a lot in the last, I guess, decade, couple of decades. We hear it a lot, but we probably don't quite think about it very deeply. I said on the podcast that I didn't grow up hearing about it. I just kind of just as a kid wouldn't have heard that word. It's really emerged a lot more recently. Uh, first thing is to suggest, give you a definition. It actually comes to us from science, not from sociology or psychology. Resilience is a scientific term that describes the ability of an object to return to its original shape after experiencing the application of force. Now, the way I describe it is think of like a spring, right? Imagine a big spring. You press that down and you apply force and it changes its shape. But once the force is released, the spring goes back to its original shape, right? So you get the point. Resilience is the ability to spring back after the application of force. In the mental health area, in the psychology area, it means the ability of each of us as people to recover after periods of stress and adversity. Why are we experiencing more stress and adversity? Why is resilience a bigger issue than it may have been at other times? Look, humans have always been going through stuff, right? Humans have always had challenges and difficulties. Why are we dealing with more of it? Very simply, our society, the world that we inhabit at the moment, is highly complex. It is uh, the neural load, by which I mean the sheer amount of stuff affecting our neurology and our physiology, at the same time as our social networks have degraded significantly. So for much of history, you had much less coming at you and you had much stronger social connections. So I think part of what is happening and why resilience is becoming a bigger topic is because it's happening at a time when we're dealing with more and more complexity and decision making and difficulty at the same time as our social networks have degraded. Now, last major intro point is go gently with yourself on this. If you feel that you're not the most resilient human, it's a spectrum. You know, we could have somebody on the show today who's the most, you know, resilient person ever and somebody who really struggles. It's a real mystery. Again, our moment in history is very reductivist. It wants to reduce all of us to kind of inputs and outputs and we can measure everything. We're all different. The reason we all have a different experience of recovery and resilience is because we're all different. We have different life experiences. We have different brain structure and brain chemistry. We're all different. So go gently with yourself on this topic. Um, what I wanted to talk about is give you a few key ideas. Uh, really... What I'm going to be talking about tomorrow in this live event, and I'm going to get a recording hopefully, so you'll be able to hear that tomorrow, talked a lot about Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning. Of course, Viktor Frankl was uh, imprisoned in the Nazi extermination camp of Auschwitz, and he, as a psychotherapist, survived the extermination camps and wrote a book when he got out called Man's Search for Meaning, where he simply identified that most people could not find a sense of meaning or purpose in the suffering that was happening. And as a result, they basically gave up and they died very quickly. And often just some people just died of despair. And he said, but there was this other smaller group of people who could find a meaning in what was happening. And by finding a meaning in it, were able to survive and to care for others and to flourish in a sense. So for him, his sense of meaning or the application of meaning was that he he said to himself, I'm going to survive this place. I'm going to teach people about what's happening here. So 
He's going, I'm here for this reason. He could link a meaning to what was happening. Now, the other thing I want to do is I'm just going to switch over here to a quote that I want to share with you. This is from Amanda Ripley. It's a really good quote that sort of summarizes this this way that we can grow in resilience by finding meaning in the hardships that we go through. So let me read this to you. She says, uh, resilience is a precious skill. People who have it tend to also have three underlying advantages, a belief that they can influence life events, a tendency to find meaningful purpose in life's turmoil, and a conviction that they can learn from both positive and negative experiences. So three points here. The first one's what we call agency. She goes, people who are resilient tend to believe that they can still impact events, even if it's only in a small way. And if you don't believe that, you end up in learned helplessness. So no matter what we're going through, and this is what Frankel was saying, right? Even if you can't change the external reality, you can still change your response to it. So you always have power. You always have agency, regardless of the external circumstance. Many of us don't want to believe that. It's much easier to believe that we are victims, that we can't push through it, that we can't grow, that we're stuck in the suffering. But I'm here to remind us all and the audience tomorrow that we always have choice. Second thing is to find the purpose in it, to ask yourself great questions. A lot of times it's just about asking a great question. What else could this mean? That's how I frame the question for people. What else could this mean? You know, if you lose your job, it's like, why did I lose my job? And your brain will go, because you're terrible. Everyone hates you and you're a really bad employee and you're going to live on the street and you'll never get another job. You got to be so careful about how you frame questions to your brain because if you're tired or some form of suffering in your life, you're, you're very likely to come up with a really bad answer to the wrong question. So the purpose could be, well, I lost my job because there's a better one around the corner or I lost my job because it's going to push me to grow and change. I know this sounds like some of you are thinking, oh, you can't, are you really, you're serious? I'm, yeah, I'm dead serious. And finally, she says that we can learn from both positive and negative experiences. So if something goes really well, you kind of go, well, what's the learning here? What did I do so I can get more of this? And if something goes wrong, you say, what did I get wrong here? Or what would I change so that I can have less of this suffering in the future? So last thing on my notes, uh, yeah, I'll get to that is how do we actually do this, right? But first, a summary, resilience is our ability to spring back. It's all about the meaning we ascribe to difficult circumstances. And please, as I said, go check out the podcast here because I go much deeper there. Um, and finally, how do you do this in practice? And my message tomorrow in this live event will be to say to people, it's very much what the Greeks figured out in the first century BC, which was, it's really about doing it in the small things so that when the big things happen, we have a lot to draw upon. By this, I mean... We don't have to wait until some great life tragedy comes to us, right? We don't have to wait and then hope that we will muddle our way through. We build resilience by doing hard things on a regular, I would argue often daily basis. We become resilient by practicing resilience. How do you practice resilience? You do difficult things. You do hard things. You you go the extra mile, you say no to something, you do a little bit more than you were going to do, you just keep strengthening and growing so that when real adversity hits, you practice the ability to endure in difficult times. All right, so I hope that's useful. You become resilient by asking yourself better questions. You become resilient by finding meaning and purpose in setbacks. You become resilient by doing hard things on a daily basis. All right. I hope that's useful. Go and check out the podcast below. I go a lot deeper. Uh, please, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button here. Go check out all those links. I'm back speaking. I'm uh, hopefully going to be in uh, in, in uh, England in a few weeks, which will be great. So if you're seeing this and you're in the UK, reach out and uh, we might be able to set up a live event. So please do that. Um, okay. God bless you, everybody. I hope that's useful. My name's Jonathan Doyle. This has been The Daily Message. You and I are going to talk again tomorrow.